Okay, so right before you are all the tools that I use to replace the bearings in the Whirlpool Cabrillo washer. Uh, I think Maytag uh, has some bearings that need to be replaced as well. But uh, here is the shaft that I pulled out. That thing's all rusty and nasty. Here's the top seal that seals everything that makes it waterproof. Here's the bottom bearing. Totally shot. This is actually the top bearing. Sorry about that. Totally shot. Here's the bottom bearing. That's totally shot as well. Here's the sleeve. What happens is, uh, so this, this shaft just sits all the way through the tub, right? And then this waterproof seal actually comes down there and sits into a hole. There's, um, a sealant that you, I guess that they do at Maytag or Whirlpool or wherever they assemble this thing, actually goes around the side, gets placed into the, gets placed in the hole. It makes a watertight seal. If this seal is compromised anyway, or that the sealant leaks, it's going to fill with water. As it fills with water, it gets everything rusty, right? And eventually, that water sits there so long, and it destroys the bearing, and the bearing leaks. And that's when you start seeing uh, like grease or mud or oil come from the bottom of your washer because this, this seal has failed that's uh, I'll put a link in the description below but uh, that's what happened to ours I should, it's a video of where I show you what it looks like when it fails and it sounds horrible with the washer spinning it just sounds very very bad it sounds like a plane is taken off in your laundry room so my wife commented to me today she couldn't believe how quiet it was after replacing the bearing so this job is not for the faint of heart. Uh, if you probably takes a little bit more skill level than just changing your oil. If you could possibly do your brakes and do a rear axle bearing, then you could probably do this job. Um, you got to make sure all the components are put in at the correct at the correct time. Some hits and pointers that I have for you. Um, you can actually do the job without the the Whirlpool um, Cabrillo bearing tool. You can do the you can do the job without the bearing tool. I actually made this. Um, this is about a foot long, maybe a little bit longer. I have two 5 8 nuts here. And then I get washers, and I'll show you in the video. But you basically, if you can imagine, I can show you right here. I have the two nuts up here that I've tightened them together so they're locked in. I can't move these. I have the washer here. And you want the washer, I actually got the wrong washers here, but you want the washer to be just a to sit just on the inside or right on the outside of the outer lip of the bearing. You don't want push you don't want to be pushing on the inner race of the bearing. If you do, you run the risk of popping it out. So you want a bearing that goes all the way to the edge of the outer the outer edge. All right, and then you bring all this stuff in. So you get the point. I actually got these washers wrong, so the larger one would go on the top because that's where the larger bearing is. You place the bearings in, you place the top bearing in, then you place the tool in. This is all thread, actually, by the way. The reason I have two washers on each side is you want them to be able to slip past each other as you're, as you're tightening everything down. This, this top one or the bottom one will start slipping. That way you, you can actually start cranking everything down. So the top bearing goes in, and then you place the sleeve the crush washer and then the, uh, the bottom bearing in from the bottom and you'll see in the video as I as I progress through this but this is the homemade tool that I made to get the to get the bearings in so you do not have to have the bearing the bearing tool to put the bearings into the Cabrillo washer or my tag if you want to spend the hundred dollars it'll make life a lot easier um, I actually ended up having to use a socket and a hammer to get uh, to get them to seat correctly uh, one thing to note is the bottom bearing will sit a little bit out past the uh, tub. You'll see it when you get in there. And then this bearing has to be all the way pushed down flush because this seal actually sits on top of that on the on the shaft right here. It'll make more sense once you get in there. Half inch impact gun to get out this uh, to get out the nut on the bottom of the shaft. This nut is one and a quarter. I had to get a one and a quarter th half inch deep socket to be able to get it out. This also worked for a, the, a 32 deep socket will also work as well. Just fits a little bit better with a one and a quarter inch socket. So that's how you get the, that's, I had to use the gun to get the, 
nut off the bottom of the shaft because it was so stuck on there. It was all rusted and nasty. Okay, so I needed uh, a 3 8 7 16 socket, a 3 8 a 3 8 3 8 3 3 8 3 8 socket, uh, a wrench, an extension. I uh, ended up using um, a 32 millimeter. So yeah, so here's a 32. It does fit, I just didn't have a deep. This is a shallow. A little bit more play in there. So a 32 millimeter deep is what you need for this uh, nut. Also ended up using um, a 36 millimeter socket to uh, push the uh, bottom bearing on. What is this, a one pound, two pound sledgehammer that I used, three pound sledgehammer for tapping in the bearings. Um, at one point, I tried getting the, um, the nut off the shaft by uh, holding with a pair of vice grips down here onto the, onto this, um, onto the spline right here. So that crimped on there. And I got a big uh, crescent wrench right here and I tried to break the nut loose, but it was just too, uh, just too stuck on there. I tried free all penetrating oil, but that didn't do anything. So that's when I went to um, my gun in a one and one quarter half inch deep socket. This was to use to install the, the, the new nut. I used this. This is actually part of the inside of a shock. Um, but I, I used this to uh, press out the, uh, or to knock out the bearings. So I took off the stator and the rotor from the bottom. Got the, got the uh, nut loose. Took the three pound sludge. This will all make more sense when you guys get in there. Took the three pound sludge, hit it from the bottom into the tub, knocked that loose. That's the only way you want to knock it loose because you have this ring right here that's already that's pressed onto the, the shaft. You're not gonna be able to get that out. So you want to press the shaft from the bottom up. From uh yeah, from the bottom into the tub. And then once I had access there, I tapped out, um, got onto the edge of the bearing. So the bearing would be sitting in here like this, it'd be on the shaft, and I hit the edge of the bearing from the bottom to the top, hit this bearing out. And went in from the, the inside of the tub, knocked the bottom bearing out. And that's when all this stuff, the, the sleeve, the crush washer, and the bearing all came out at the same time, hitting it from the from the tub out. Pair of dikes, another pair of dikes, screwdrivers, Phillips, and standard. I'll put a link in the description below of the kit that I bought from Amazon. Just make sure you get your model number of the washer uh, before you buy the kit, just to make sure you get the right one. So it, came, it said metal adhesive. This actually smells like uh, old, old testers model glue. It smells exactly like that. That's what it remind me of. But then this stuff seemed to be some kind of. It seemed to be like a grease. So what I did when I was installing a new one, I took this grease, wrapped on the inside here, right, and then you got to make a waterproof seal on the on the on the outside because this has to be waterproof. So then I went to O'Reilly Auto Parts. And I picked up myself some water pump and thermostat housing, RTV silicone. This is from Permatex. Part number is 22071. 22071 for this Permatex RTV silicone. And with that, I just went around, put a small bead on the outside here, and then spread it around all the way around, made it good, good thick layer. Then I went to my local hardware store and got, uh, what is this, two inch pipe. This is a foot long, this cost me a dollar. And I went down in there. This will all make more sense once you get down there. So the new shaft will be there, the bearing will be there and you gotta seal this, right? So you gotta push this down because you have the tub right here, right? And then you come in here like this, you push it down into place, make sure that's pushed into place. And then the tub will be right here. You'll have the seal right here and then I took some more RTV and I, you'll see it here in the video. And uh, you just coat it there, there all along. Make it, make sure it's good and sealed up, sealed up nice and tight, because you don't want it leaking water. That's what caused the first failure. And then I let it sit for about 10 hours. Don't put any water into the washer. Don't fill it up, don't try to use it until that RTV has had time to set up correctly. This is a jack out of a Honda, Honda Accord. You can find these jacks anywhere. I use this and a piece of wood let me see if I have that piece of wood still. You could use a two by four, but this is all I had was a, I wanna say four by four. 
and I used this to get the tub out. I could not get the tub out for the life of me. This is old shaft, right? And this is very at the top. This is where the, the agitator sits on to. So then you take the jack. So you take the jack, you put the jack on top of the, the shaft. And then once that's in place, you take the wood and you put it in there and you put this onto the sides of the tub. And then you put the jack on, on the bottom of that and then you start cranking it up. And that's what, that's what allowed me to pop the tub open or get the tub out. Measure it for yourself, but the, the measurement I had most success, for, most success with was 21 and 3 quarter inches. But like I said, measure your tub before you cut. Whenever you cut wood, measure twice, cut once. 409 multipurpose cleaner to clean the um, outside of the tub. The stator, the rotor, because in my case, uh, the seal failed and shot rust everywhere. It was all over the place. Also, you need to take out the tub. You're going to see, you might, might, may or may not see a bunch of mold. I actually tipped mine over in the street and shot a hose into it. Cleaned it all out. Um, it was really, really bad. It stunk very bad as well. Um, what else? What else on this Cabrillo? On the washer bearing replacement. What else on the bearing washer replacement that I can tell you about? Um, I apologize for the choppy camera work coming up. Coming up, I had to shoot it with two cameras. Um, one was with my iPhone, the other one was with a GoPro. So you might have some uh, voiceover work coming up as well. But uh, this job took me about eight hours. Uh, I got it done in one day. Uh, but it saved me from buying a new washer. It was to the point where the Cabrillo washer wouldn't even finish the the spin cycle and would just leave our clothes sopping wet with soap in them. Uh, it did fix the problem. I was getting the UL code on the washer at about 11 minutes and would never finish the cycle. And my, mo my mom, my, my wife was getting pretty ticked off about it. So was I. $76 from Amazon. Like I said, I'll put a link in the description below. Just know that you can make your own tool for the bearings on this washer. I did it right here. This was about $11. If you want to make your life a little bit easier, go ahead and buy the tool and then maybe find a post it on Craigslist once you're done with it and get your money back. Because I tried searching for Craigslist for the tool in my area, but nothing came up. Just people selling their washers because uh, the bearings were bad. I apologize for ranting on so much. Um, I hope this helps you out. If you can, subscribe to my channel. I know this isn't my standard automotive video, but uh, it is a DIY, and it does save you a lot of money because it saved me from having to buy a new washer. I don't know what washers are going for, what? 600 700 800 dollars oh yeah you also need a quarter inch hex to get the stator off to get the rotor off and then you get the stator off um various nut drivers here three sixteenths quarter inch crescent wrench so this plastic piece sits on top of the or sits at the bottom of the tub it uh the the stator and the rotor are right here so it actually goes like this this is the very bottom You'll see when you get in there. I couldn't get this thing to stay up, so I actually just left it off. But there are some um, a wiring harness that actually has a little plastic clip that gets put onto here. So what I did, I just got some zip ties and uh, and zip tied it to the um, to a motor. I think it's the motor that pumps the water out, and uh, left it that way. I just left this off. I could not get it back on. There's no clips. It just kind of pushes into place, and every time I push it into place, it would just fall down. So. I said I don't need it, and uh, we were behind on laundry, so we've been washing <laughs> we've been washing clothes all day long, and it seems to do fine without that plastic piece. Without further ado, I will show you the video and how I did this. Uh, if you guys have any questions, comments on how to do this job, just leave it in the comments below, or you can always shoot me an email at bundysgarage at gmail.com. And yeah, I will shut up now. <laughs>